Well, hello again. This new week, this final week uh, of Advent, as we continue to journey forward to Christmas Day and the celebration of Jesus' birth, the incarnation of God in the flesh. Uh, I'm Pastor Michelle Allen here at First Presbyterian Church, and it's good to be with you. I'm glad that we have this time together to search the scriptures and to pray together. We have been focusing on the season of Advent. For those of you who may not know, Advent is the season leading up to Christmas. And it usually begins in late November, sometimes early December. It is the first part of the Christian year, calendar year, based on the life of Christ. Uh, oftentimes you find yourself um, in Advent looking at the prophecies of the coming of the Messiah, the Son of God. So uh, we have been looking at Advent uh, from many different dimensions. There are primarily three dimensions in Advent. Remember a couple weeks ago we looked at the first dimension, the historical dimension, the stories in the scripture of the birth of Jesus as a little baby. Hence the mangers, uh, the stories of Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and the angels and the wise men. Uh, that's the historical side of Advent, the first coming of Jesus, because Advent means arrival or coming. There's also the second dimension of Advent, which is the second coming of Jesus, which the Bible also talks about. And we looked at that last week. Many different passages from all over the scriptures about uh, how Christ will come again. But this time it won't be as a baby. It will be in all of his glory as the risen and glorified Son of God. This week, we're going to look at the third dimension of Advent, and that is the personal coming of Jesus into each one of our hearts. Each one of us has a story to tell about meeting Jesus on a personal level uh, that goes deeper than just the stories in the scripture uh, about his first coming or second coming. This would be that personal approach of Jesus to you and to me. So I've picked out some passages that help to talk about that. <clears throat> and of course, throughout this week, this is one of the most important dimensions of Advent, because if we do not have that personal relationship with Jesus, we may know everything about the first coming of Jesus, we may know everything about his second coming, but if we don't have that relationship with Christ now, during our lifetime, it will be very difficult for anybody to be able to get into heaven. So there is that relationship that you want with the Son of God. I'm going to take you first to um, a passage in the scriptures in the New Testament where there was a call that went out for people to begin that relationship with Jesus. People who had really, from what it seems, no idea of what had been happening with Jesus. It takes place after he's already been raised from the dead, after he's already ascended back into heaven, and right on the day of Pentecost when the early disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit and now are equipped by God himself to deliver the good news and to call people to believe. So I'm taking you to Acts chapter 2 verses 22 and following. I'm going to skip around a little bit. Uh, I'm actually going to skip over some parts because uh, some of it is, is a little lengthy and would require a lot more discussion. But I want to take you through what's going on here. Pentecost has happened. The Holy Spirit has come upon with tongues of fire the first set of believers that were with Jesus. And they've been praying for 10 days uh, since Jesus ascended into heaven at his command. He said to pray and wait for the advocate who would be the Holy Spirit. And we're the first people to begin to sense the power of the Holy Spirit and the um, boldness that the Spirit brings to a person would be Peter. And notice uh, in verse 22, this is Peter talking now to the crowd that has seen the effects of the Holy Spirit coming at Pentecost and people are wondering what's going on. So he says, fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs, which God did among you through him as you yourselves know. There he's saying basically he was accredited by God. Now, if you've ever been through an accreditation process with a school or a, an organization of some sort, you know that you want to prove that that organization is worthy of who they say they are. Well, here it's interesting language. Peter is saying God accredited Jesus by how? By miracles, wonders, and signs. So if you needed extra proof that Jesus was the one, look at all the miracles that happened. Okay. 
This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge. God had this planned all along. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. So Peter is reiterating the story of Jesus here. Go down to verse 29. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him an oath, on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Of course, that's in the scriptures as well. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that would be David talking about Jesus, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. Therefore, let uh, Verse 36, Therefore let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Now notice the reaction of the people when they hear this. Peter has said this was the Messiah. This is the one we've been waiting for, that God said he would send. He has fulfilled his promises. And it says in verse 37, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? And notice what Peter says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promises for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. And then he says, with many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. On Pentecost, 3,000 people were added to the church. Remember, the church at that point was just the early disciples. So what has to happen for that personal relationship with Jesus to begin? There needs to be repentance. We need to say we're sorry about living apart from him, sorry for our sins. And then baptism, which is the sign that Jesus gave that you were now a member of his family here on earth. And of course, we do baptisms in the church. So you join that community of faith that is, that is part and parcel to being a Christian, is to be part of the community of faith, not in name only, but physically and spiritually with the people of God. So there has to be repentance. And that's the question that, uh, you know, remember John the Baptist, that was his message, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. He was saying that before Jesus uh, was even baptized. Um, and remember, the Bible says John was sent ahead of Jesus to announce this, to prepare people. This is how you prepare to receive Jesus. This is how you prepare for him to come to you. There needs to be a repentance in your heart. There needs to be a sorrow for the way you've lived. There needs to be a, a sadness over a confession of our sins. And that's the way that we open the door to our hearts for Jesus. That doesn't happen. Jesus can't come in. Now, the great thing is Jesus helps us with that. Notice when the people said, uh, the Bible says they were cut to the heart. Uh, that wasn't their own doing. That wasn't even Peter's doing. That was the Holy Spirit working on people's hearts. And that's how God preps us, so to speak, for his kind of surgery when he comes into our hearts. He touches our hearts and he speaks to us in the deep recesses of who we are. And we know who we are and we know how lost we are without God. And that it's in there that God does his thing and that he sends Jesus into our hearts uh, to give us forgiveness, to give us the peace of forgiveness, of knowing and trusting him and what he did at the cross, that that is enough for our sins to be forgiven and to believe that he wanted to do that for us, for you and me. So the first step of having that personal relationship with Christ is to repent, uh, to turn to God uh, with your heart and to open up your heart to him. So Again, this dimension of Advent, if you haven't done that yet, uh, let, let's pray on that, uh, that you or whoever you may know who have has do, hasn't done it yet uh, would take a moment to be able to do that, to allow God to enter in through Christ. Almighty God, we give you thanks that you are never so far away that we cannot open the door of our hearts and you can enter in. Uh, we thank you that you are already working on the hearts of those who have yet to believe 
We thank you for the day that we recognized you for who you are in our own lives and we accepted you as Lord and Savior. And if even right now there is someone listening to this devotional today who has not yet done that, but who knows that they want to, that they have to, that there is nothing else they can do uh, that is so pressing and so necessary, Lord, speak to their hearts even now. Help them to open up the door to their hearts that they may turn to you and receive you and trust that all that you did at the cross was all that was necessary to forgive us of our sins and that you receive us because of what you have done. Lord, we are grateful for this part of Advent that speaks so personally to each one of us. Thank you, Lord, for that gift of sending yourself into our hearts. In your precious name we pray. Amen. All right, so I hope this is a joyous journey this final week as we move into that third dimension of Advent and look into our own hearts into the coming of Jesus. God bless you.